Hey guys, I just wanted to share with you my new 300 Blackout build I'm wrapping up. Uh, it's pretty unusual as far as I know. Uh, nobody's ever built one like this before. Uh, and I believe it's also probably the lightest 300 Blackout ever made. But this is a uh, manually operated uh, 300 Blackout bolt action straight pull pistol. Um, it's got a left side charging handle. And this weighs in at about 38 ounces right now. Uh, basically the same as a 1911 or you know any other large frame revolver or something like that. And uh, usually the first two questions people have when they see it is uh, why would you want to build something like that and how does it operate? So as far as why I wanted to build it, kind of my initial thought was just to see, um, you know, people have built just about everything else off the AR frame, uh, everything you can think of. And I thought, could you make a pistol that instead of just being a pistol, you know, by legal status only, just kind of in name, um, could you build a real handgun, something that's light enough and small enough that you can actually carry it and shoot it and use it like a normal handgun? And uh, my other thought process in building a manually operated gun uh, was to see <clears throat> when you already have a semi-auto like that, uh, you can only really get so quiet with your suppressor. Uh, because your loads have to have enough power to cycle the action and then the, the action itself cycling makes a certain amount of noise And so that's why a lot of guys like to add a uh, manually operated gun to their collection uh, Because that gives you a lot more options You eliminate the action noise and you also get a lot more options as far as what kind of loads you can shoot uh, With this because I don't have to have enough pressure to cycle the action I can load subsonics in any weight I want and I have bullets for this that I can load from uh, 60 grains all the way up to 265 all out of the same gun all subsonic and that allows you to uh, get a lot quieter than you can get with a normal AR uh, So there it is with the suppressor. It's a lot of fun And uh, like I said, you can get really really quiet with this thing and so that's something fun to play with on the side and uh by eliminating the gas operation and making it a bolt action, uh, you eliminated a lot of the parts that you would otherwise need on an AR, and that's part of what allowed it to be so light. Uh, you don't need a gas block, you don't need a gas tube, you don't need a handguard, you don't need a normal charging handle, you only need half a bolt carrier, um, you don't need most of your gas key, you don't need your bolt catch, you don't need your buffer tube, you don't need your buffer, your spring, all these parts that you can eliminate uh, by making it a straight pull bolt action pistol. <clears throat> so. A lot of people are puzzled, they see this and the first thing they think of is that it's just an AR-15 that doesn't work and they don't really understand why you would want that. <clears throat> but I like to think of it as more like a, uh, a Thompson Center contender that costs half as much, weighs a third as much, holds 10 shots and uh, reloads with a flick of the wrist, you know, ready to shoot another shot. And uh, I usually use 10 round magazines. You can put whatever you want in it, of course. It's an AR frame. Looks kind of neat with the 20s in there, but uh, anyway. You can put one of these together, for, you know, for just a few hundred bucks. And uh, if you went out and wanted to get a, a 300 blackout barrel made for your contender, you know, those run you about close to $400 to have one made by the time you're done. So this is a very economical option for uh, hunting, especially target shooting, playing around with a suppressor. Uh, but I'm going to use it as a hunting pistol. I hunt in an area where uh, rifles aren't allowed, but pistols are, and I normally use that. But uh, this will be even more fun. And so uh, the other thing I did that uh, allows it to be so light is because you don't uh, have as much stress on the action from it firing uh, in semi-automatic mode, you know, uh, I was able to use a polymer lower and a polymer upper because the frame isn't subject to the same stress that it would be on a semi-automatic. You don't have the bolt and the buffer slamming back and forth and putting that stress on uh, certain parts of the frame that are prone to breaking on polymer lowers. Um, with this, everything stays locked up tight and shut when it fires, and then uh, there's no pressure on the frame when you cycle it. So uh, a poly lower and a poly upper work just fine. I mean, they're poly hybrid, you know, they have metal inserts here and there, but um, that's part of what allows it to be so light. And, uh, you know, this is actually small enough that you could carry it in a, a holster if you wanted to. I've got somebody lined up who's going to make me a Kydex holster for this, uh, not for use with the suppressor on, of course. Um, there is a QD sling stud back here that allows you to carry it from a sling. I'll probably use that with the suppressor on when I'm hunting and just carry it on a sling. But without the suppressor on there, you know, you could fit it in a holster. And uh, one other side effect of it being manually operated is um, since you don't have to torque the nut down so uh, tight as you would on a gas operated gun, um, you could actually swap out the barrels. I've got another barrel stub here in 300 Blackout. Uh, it's about four and a half inches. And eventually I'll thread that and contour it and have another shorter barrel. And uh, this one's about six inches, but you could do other calibers. You know, you could do whatever you want. You want to make a 5.56 five, barrel, um, all kinds of different options, different barrel lengths, whatever you want. Uh, I've got a Burris Fast Fire mounted on the back there. And uh, this little plug in the back, a lot of people are curious about that. Um, 
This is sold, uh, I bought this one through Brownells. It's, it's sold under the Spikes Tactical name, but it's a plug they made for rimfire AR pistols where you don't need a buffer tube. Um, but it works well for this. They cost you about 20 bucks. It's got a QD sling stud in the middle. And then uh, the bolt carrier, <clears throat> it's basically just a regular bolt carrier uh, that's been cut in half. Uh, you don't need all the weight and the length of a regular carrier because um, because it's not it's not cycling, it's not semi-automatic. And so basically the carrier just becomes a handle to allow you to manipulate the bolt. Um, you know, it as you pull it back, it cams the bolt open, retracts it, chambers another round, and that's all you really need the, um, the carrier for, is to give you something to grab onto. And so um, it's cut, I'll show you a close up of it here at the end of the video, but it's basically just cut in half and then drilled and tapped for the, uh, the charging handle there. And then I milled this slot here. This didn't start as a side charging upper. Um, right now I've just got a plain shoulder bolt in there as a charging handle and that works fine. Uh, eventually I'll probably fabricate a little bit nicer, you know, better looking charging handle for it, but this is perfectly functional as is. And uh, you know, it's an accurate pistol. Um, it has, you know, all the same modularity as a regular AR. You know, if you want to drop in triggers, different grips, other parts, that's one of the nice things about it that you don't necessarily get with other, uh, you know, rifle caliber pistols that you might use for hunting or target shooting or whatnot. And, uh, and it doesn't have much recoil. I mean, I may basically just use it with subsonics. And uh, like I said, it weighs about the same as like a 1911 or something like that. It's uh, right around 38 ounces as uh, just a bare gun. And then of course the suppressor on front adds some weight and uh, keeps the recoil down as well. So uh, anyway, there you go. I've got about uh, half a dozen other guys that I know of since I started building this one that have also uh, started making their own little twist on it. Everybody's got a slightly different variation, but uh, you know, it's not for everybody. And you know, it's not something to own in in place of a semi-auto, uh, but in addition to it, it's kind of a kind of a fun little side project, uh, especially if you have a suppressor or if you hunt with a handgun. So, uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other questions, uh, anything you want to know about it. Um, we'll be doing probably some more videos on it, and uh, hopefully get a deer with it this fall. So, there you go. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll give you a couple shots of the insides of it here, so you can see uh, how those are laid out and how they work. So, thanks for watching.